Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with what I'm hoping is our new weekly featured guest, Elise. How you doing, Elise? I'm so good. How are you, Zuber? I'm doing very, very well. So in video number one, we heard a little bit about your story. In video number two, we talked about working as a partnership and we closed with creative financing. Also in video number one, we both talked about how we set ourselves up for the next couple of years. I don't know about you, uh, but just between you and I, you know, nobody else is watching right now. I am vibrating with excitement for the next two right? years. Right. It's going to be amazing. We're positioned. We're ready. Yeah. I'm, we're, I'm already doing work. I'm already writing offers. I'm already doing this. I'm writing crazy low cash offers. I'm writing, you know, at market seller financing, You've done some sub two. You're do you're this is what I am investing in. How can I control more assets in the next two years than I have in the last 20 years? It is right out there. So uh, what what do you see? Um, I think there's gonna be a lot more opportunities for subject twos. I think that people have not known what they were and they didn't have to. Rates were cheap for everyone. They didn't have to approach this. Um, but you know, there's there's three things in a deal, right? There's money, there's terms, there's time. If, if people want the highest amount of money for their property, then they might have to compromise with the terms. So we have started approaching people about subject twos and we've done subject twos in the past. And I think it's going to become a lot more popular moving forward. A lot more popular. Yeah. The beauty about this is I have been doing this a little bit longer than you, right? You've been yeah. five or six years. I got 20 yes. years. And yes. some people have come back to me and goes, well, why weren't you doing that in 08, 09, right? Because the Great Recession, blah, blah, blah. Here's the deal. The debt was a liability. It was literally toxic. Right. The debt was adjustable rate. It was short term. It was this, that. You yeah. couldn't cash flow because the debt yeah. would explode. It would literally explode. Today, heading into this environment, this recession, this unemployment going up, whatever you want to call it, we had 98% of loans fixed. We have, Beautiful. depending on what data source, 75 to 80% of loans below five, 50% right. of loans below four, 13% of loans below three. Right. I want some of that. Right. And I'll pay you a little bit more to get it. Um, you were talking about the way you structure your offers. That's exactly what we did when we offered and got the sub, the last sub two that we did, um, which I just for the listeners, I'm going to say this out loud because I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with subject twos, but it's subject to the existing mortgage, right? Which means that you take on the seller's mortgage, right? So you pay their loan and it could be for the life of the loan or it could be for a limited amount of time. We did limited term on their subject twos, which is was even more favorable for the seller. Um, and it also gave us a little bit more control in the in the long term. But um, we gave three offers. We said, here's what we'll pay if it's cash. Here's what we'll pay if it's conventional. And here's what we'll pay if you give it to a sub two for X amount of time. And then we will refinance out. Um, and Did you ask for three, six, nine months? What'd you ask for? We actually did six months, but we didn't even pull the full six. So you you know what the seasoning period, and I'm sure your listeners know, right? The six month seasoning period, um, at least to do a cash out refi. You can do rate term refi before then, but if you're looking to pull cash um, and they want to go sell that loan on the tertiary market or they have certain standards, they have to um, they can't do cash out refi for six months. However, the lender that we had um, was a portfolio lender. They kept all their loans in house, so they could pick and choose which um, you know standards that they wanted to have, and they didn't have a seasoning period. Nice. So um, we went ahead and uh, rehabbed the property and then did a cash out refi. Um, having only gave our, our deal was we gave five grand to the seller. We said, we'll give you five grand walking away money and we want to sub two. And that was nice. it. Yeah. Nice. It was a good deal. Yeah. So there's, again, I, my people watch on my channel know that I'm, I'm so excited about what's coming because creativity is going to win. Absolutely. So not only is it very common for me to write two offers on the same house, because again, one of the things I'm doing is I'm fishing for pain right. or motivation. Right. And so I won't do that on a first day listing. Right. Yep. I'm going to wait you, for me today. It's 60 days, right? 60 days is kind of like, okay, now we're going to get feeling it. And you're coming to a different understanding. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah. still have it listed after 60 days, yeah, there's something going on. So you're right. going to get a cash offer, which is crazy low, but I'm willing to close and you're going to get a terms offer, which is, um, you know, closer, closer to list price, but probably not list price. Right. The other thing I'm willing to do is I'm actually doing mailers. I am using PropStream to mail to owners who have 80% equity or more 
been right. in their house, been in the property 10 years or more. And I'm going straight up seller financing, right? Yes. Full, full, for, you know, I'll bring in 10%. You finance 90%. Yes. Something else I'm doing is I want to buy what's, you know, you, we talk about monopoly. I am trying to buy park place or boardwalk in Fresno, California. Okay. If you look at the monopoly board, I'm like, I mean, what's, so it's like dark purple, light blue. What's that next color? Is it like orange or something? I'm, yeah. I'm going to call it red, yeah. whatever it is. Right. Okay. I'm on that second, second area. Right. All right. Um, but I'm going to go buy park place and boardwalk. What is that in Fresno? My median price is about 400. I, the, I'm trying to buy something 500 grand and above. I am willing to buy a million dollar home in Fresno, California with terms. Oh and yeah. A ten, and a 10 year balloon. Yeah. Right. I will pay you your price, but we have to structure the payment so I can hold this as a long-term rental for yeah. at least 10 years. Yeah. And I've you can even stretch it. that term yeah. out too. That's the thing people, when it's the seller, right? You are not subject to the same terms as a bank. So yeah. as long as that number, right? As you are net positive with, again, some extra, right? To be conservative, <laughs> you could do a 40 year loan. Absolutely. It's the seller and have the proceeds go right to a trust or whatever. And it goes to their kids. As yep. long as that number makes sense and you're netting positive, that's the thing. Get creative. Yep. And the thing is too, even with portfolio, we, I, um, I don't think I was on bef um, after we bought that 13 property portfolio, we got creative with it. If you can't take it down, you know, traditionally that 13 property portfolio, we had 11 under a conventional loan. We had the seller finance us too. And one, we bought cash. We broke it down. Nice. So that's the thing is you just got to figure out how to take it down and, um, yeah, split it up if you have to sell it. And like we said, we did seller financing on a couple of them. We sure did. Yeah. The beauty of what's coming also is there's going to be so much less competition. The last couple of years, I don't know about you, but my market was so, I mean, everybody was paying Naturated. cash. Yeah. It was, it was, I mean, it, had cash to burn. everybody had cash. If it was listed, it was bid on a hundred. I mean, I didn't get a deal out of the MLS for three years and one rental at a time was built on out of the MLS. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, it, and I looked a thousand, you know how frustrating at least it is to look a thousand days in a row and get nothing. I, I, I don't I, know a thousand, but I purposefully removed myself from running, from looking like heavily because yeah. I, I put myself on pause. I'm not, I'm going to be honest with you. I was getting so frustrated yeah. that even the flip that we, we got recently, the only reason that we got it is because it was to the studs, right? So your buying pool, even these yeah. cash buyers, whatever, they were like, that's too much. And that's finally, a little too all much. right, we'll take it. We'll take it. But literally, I mean, plumbing, yeah. electrical, we're adding a bedroom and a bathroom. I mean, the roof, the windows, I mean, everything. But that buying pool before, you're right. It was so large. Everyone had cash to burn. Um, and they were, it was stupid money. They were throwing it at, yeah. The, at, yeah. Yeah. So it, when I look at 2023 and 2024, I think there's a couple of things for me, 2023 is residential four and below seller financing sub two. I would love, like, if you're, if you're a VA, if you have a VA loan, I would love to assume the VA loan. Yes. Right. Not even sub yes. two, just make it assumable. Uh, I, I, I plan to do a lot of residential and then I don't think we've talked about this. I actually think commercial is going to blow up. I Please. think there are so many multifamily investors who, like we kind of talked yeah. about or joked in video one, got stupid. Mm -hmm. I can't believe multifamily investors are repeating the same stupidity as 05 and 06. What is yeah. that? Short-term yeah. debt, yeah, variable rate debt, and just the most asinine assumptions I've ever seen. Yeah. They did As it. if the market now, was going to continue this way forever. Housing never goes down. Right. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Rents are going to go up forever. No, they're not. Right. Vacancies will always be 99 po or uh, occupancy 99. No, it's not. Right. I mean, these deal because I'm an accredited investor. I see the deals and they're, I wouldn't touch them with your money. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. yeah you are. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> We're friends. Right. Um, but yeah, these deals are going to blow up. There are some LPs that have lost their ass and they don't even know it yet. It's, it's going to be bad. I think you're right about this. Again, I know as I'm supposed to go, we're supposed to go into multis, but I think you're so right about these um, single family homes because people are desiring that lifestyle. You know, they want the dog, they want the yard, right? 
and the interest rates currently are keeping them from purchasing. Exactly. So I think that you're going to get that with the rental market and there's still going to be, it's just, we're creating this even higher rental market when the yes. interest rates are so high. So it's a good spot to be in with single family homes. Now I'm going to be here and then win multi, because again, I, if you read my book, I've done this before. I'm going to dominate, I'm going to focus on residential. And then when multifamily breaks, I will just 1031 out of houses, right? I'll, exactly. I'll have I'll ask my tenant to leave. I'll spend 10 or 15 grand cleaning it up. I'll sell it to an FHA buyer. And then all my equity will dump into an apartment building that is bought for pennies on the dollar. I've done right. it before and we'll do it again. Right. We just have to look at the market. That's It's just being very aware. And, and I absolutely, I could not agree with you more that I think there's just going to be a strong rental market right now when people can't get in with these interest rates. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So when you, when you, you know, when you look at the economy next year, do you think about recession GDP or you just run your numbers, be a mom, be a wife, you, you know, we don't worry about the economy. Okay. So I've been reading, I mean, everyone's talking that there's going to be a recession, right? Like there's eight out of 10 indicators, right? It's very strong and housing usually leads us into it, blah, blah, blah. Sure. Mm -hmm. That being said, we run the numbers and we're very conservative. We make sure that we allow, right, for everything, for our maintenance, our um, CapEx, our repair, right, repairs, maintenance, our property management, our vacancy, all of the above. And we run our numbers very conservatively and we and we execute and that's it. We did the same thing going into COVID before we bought this 13 property portfolio um, is we just ran the numbers and, you know, lenders were shutting their, you know, desks. Yeah. It was a crazy time. It was, it was a crazy time. And we just kept double checking those numbers. We were scared to do the deal. We were scared to not do the deal. I mean, it was a crazy time, but um, the numbers, you just have to like pull your emotions out of it and look at the numbers. That's it. Very, very cool. Well, if somebody wanted to follow you, be part of your world, how would they do that? Yes. Find me on Instagram. My Instagram is at investing for financial freedom. And you can find my husband on bigger pockets. He's more active on there. Todd Rasmussen. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elise. Thank you.